Broadcasting live from Death Cap Glade on the plain of Innistrad. This is Tap Tap Concede. Welcome everybody to Tap Tap Concede. My name is Graham. Joining me is Nelson. Yes, I am here. And Cameron. Huh? And today we are doing a crack a pack episode because it's Desert Bus happening right now, and we recorded this earlier. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get your own packs to crack, head on over to the show sponsor, Card Kingdom cardkingdom.com slash LRR. That lets them know that we sent you, and we do that because we think they're great. Excellent customer service, incredibly fast shipping, and you can ask them for a little button. You can say, loading, ready, run, sent to me button, please, and they'll give you a little one-inch button, which currently says upkeep, draw, whoops, untap. Though that might have changed by the time this episode goes up. I'm not entirely sure. And of course, this show and everything we do is brought to you by you and your kind support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loading, ready, run. So we are recording this on November 6th. So if it's all fallen apart <laughs> between <laughs> between uh, now and when you're hearing this episode, between when we're recording, when you're hearing this episode, we won't be commenting on that this week, whatever that is, whatever, whatever horrible magic internet drama is happening in the interim. Whatever happened that broke magic and made it never the same again, again. Yeah. Yep. Or, you know, perhaps something catastrophic other else catastrophic has happened which we yeah. also won't be commenting on although it's entirely possible that you won't be able to listen to this podcast because of that event right if you can hear the dulcet tones of our voices allow us to lull you back to a simpler time on november 6 2021 when the evil beetles hadn't risen from the ground yet ah uh, yes the beagles we're gonna do we're, yeah we're gonna do a little a little crack a pack here and uh, we've got three packs that uh, james selected and I'm going to start with this pack of Ravnica Allegiance. This was given to us by Corey at PAX East 2019. So it's been kicking around for a little bit. Let's get into it. This is one of my top favorite sets to draft. Thanks, Corey. Mm. All righty. <laughs> Starting off big with the Humungulus. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot how much I love this card name. Oh, they must have had a lot of fun with that one. The, ooh, the... Hmm. Pack smell is sharp. Four and a blue for a two five with hexproof. It's a, it's a very big homunculus, the humunculus. Real good in the high alert deck. Yep, that's right. It was a cornerstone of the high alert. Although still not as important. It's just three mana, one four flyer that can get vigilance. That one was good too. The wasn't no, it's not courier griffin. Senate griffin. Senate. Senate courier. Senate courier. It was an owl, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. And of course, there was also the. Two five with vigilance that can't be blocked. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. The 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 hussar, right? But Homunculus is he's on on team high alert too. Oh yeah, yeah. Hexproof is a big deal. Gravel hide goblin one in a red for a two one and had an activated ability for three and a green to get plus two plus two until end of turn. Girl playables. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely playable. Mm hmm. Not excited to put this thing in your deck, but hey. It costs two mana. Yep. Maybe you're excited by the rest of the things in your deck that made yeah. you play this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, this flavor text from Domri Raid. No piece of cord will save Ravnica. You don't build on rot. You burn it down and start again. I don't know if that's true. Is that what you do with rot? I, I, maybe if it's like a rotten building. You cut, cut it out. I don't recommend burning things down in general, though. You know, that's just not the most environmentally sound waste management strategy. <laughs> Tomri has more anarchic plans. Anyway, Vizcopa Vampire is next. This is two and an Orzhov hybrid mana for a 3-1 vampire with lifelink. I recall that this one actually snuck into a lot of different decks, particularly the Azorius sort of control decks. It was just kind of nice to have that life buffer. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. If you if you have some other large toughness creatures, this can kind of sit around and get ready to trade with an X three and mm -hmm. gain life and yeah. sort of mess up combat math. Oh, speaking of creatures, you're keen to trade off in combat. Sage's Rose Savant, one in a blue for a two one Vidalcan Wizard. When it enters the battlefield, you scry two. So then it trades in combat. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Not a high pick there. Undercity Scavenger. This one's interesting. Three and a black for a 3-3 three, three Ogre Warrior. And when Undercity Scavenger enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, you put two plus one plus one counters on the Scavenger and scry two. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. This one actually I liked more. It's weird. They both have scry too, right? Mm -hmm. But usually you would wait until like you kind of needed to wait until the opening turns were sort of finished and you're in the mid game and like the, you know, plans solidified or perhaps there was a, a ground stall or something. And then the, the scavenger comes down, you know, eating up whatever the least useful creature is. And at that point in the game, scry two is a lot more valuable than on turn two. Maybe when you have to put a two drop down to start racing or to, to trade off and comment as we talked about. Mm. So yeah, I, I actually thought this one put in a lot of work. Yeah, that's a good thought as well, as, uh, especially if at that point in the game you had got something maybe like locked down the Law Mage's Binding or some such. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sylvan Brush Strider, two and a green for a 3-2 beast, and when it enters the battlefield you gain two life. This weird, like, giraffalope. <laughs> hey, Ravik is home to some strange beasts. Yeah. Quite. Yeah. Like, what's with the Indric? Why are they like that? <laughs> I don't know. That's a great question. Thank you. Do you ever think you see some like handler on Ravnica talking to an Indric and just being like, we talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we understood each other. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> work with me. That's that's the scene among many people's graves <laughs> on Ravnica. <laughs> or the site of their death, at least. Uh, Above their shattered remains. Justiciar's Portal is next. It's uh, one and a white for an instant. Exile target creature you control, then return that creature to the battlefield under its owner's control. It gains first strike until end of turn. I don't think I ever saw this played. This is always last pick, but if someone ever gets you with it, they feel so clever. I, I've lost a creature to this this combat trick. That's Yeah, your opponent must have felt like a genius. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you get to kill someone's like creature with your twenty third pick, and possibly get other value from the blink effect, like yeah, it's clear the ceiling on this card is high. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I feel about this. Speaking of flavor text, about this like minority report action, with the new guildmasters innovations, that being Dovin, are, the arresters can arrive on the scene moments before a crime is committed. Oh yeah, that's wild. I guess that's trying to give some flavor to first strike. But yeah, very minority report, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think Dovin should be in charge of this <laughs> guild. <laughs> Controversial opinion. Yeah. Wait a minute. This guy sucks. Get the point is next. Three black, red for an instant. Destroy target creature. Scry one. Yep. Yep. Sure yep. does kill a creature for five mana. <laughs> My favorite home for this was in the blue-white Dovin's Acuity deck. The witch? Oh, really? Oh, like, yeah, I would usually go five-color Dovin's Acuity. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Counterpoint. Dovin's a cutie. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Canadian accent or whatever. Dovin's acuity is what I'm the card I'm trying to talk about, <laughs> which is an enchantment that lets you draw a card. And uh, if you cast an instant during your main phase, you can like put it back in your hand so you can cast it again and draw another card. So yeah, you gain life off it too. Right. So it sort of plays it for, furthers your plan and lets you just kind of like canter up off of all your other instants. So Having something you can kill a creature that at instant speed is good. Even if having lots of mana colors in your deck is bad. Flavor text. Vraska, this is attributed to Judith, saying Vraska sees the grandeur in death, but misses the hilarity. <laughs> <laughs> Catacomb Crocodile is four and black for a three seven crocodile. Yeah. Sure is. Sometimes yep. you need to block. I'm not going to read every piece of flavor text, but this one's also great. I am Sewer King, said Rat. I am quick and cunning, and I know every tunnel. No, I am king, said Zombie. I am cold and deadly, and no rot can harm me. Then Croc came and ate them both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. It's, it's like, oh, yeah. It's like, all right, very direct. Good job. That That's what we call praxis. Yeah. Chili B. <laughs> mm. Chillbringer. Finally a card we're excited about. Yeah. Four and a blue for a 3-3 three, three elemental with flying... When Chillbringer enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Love to have a couple chili bees kicking around the deck. This card is so much better than every other card in the pack so far. It's just just soaring above them. Chili bee was a core element of the stealth blue-black archetype in the format. Oh, secret Demir. Right. Yep. 
Yeah. If you went runner, runner, chillbringer too, that was brutal. If you're like, all right, tap that thing down, smash in, and then next turn, play another chillbringer, tap a different thing down, hit with your previous chillbringer. You can make wild comebacks too. Like you could be far behind in the life race and not enough permanence on the table and then just like start casting successive chili bees and then eventually win. Mm -hmm. Winner, winner, chillbringer. <laughs> that worked a lot better in my head. <laughs> that was so much better in my head. <laughs> winner winner chill and bringer uh, i'm gonna move on to frilled mystic thank you thank you i appreciate that no problem it's the lizard wizard it's an elf lizard wizard uh green green blue blue for a three two with flash when it enters the battlefield you may counter target spell i played this card in constructed because i was an evil simic nexus player mm. yep god that card was a mistake sorry it's just so weird that Nexus of Fate got printed. Yep. And then it got, and then it was a booster box promo. Oh, God. I just, my skin is crawling remembering all that. Yeah. I forgot about the booster box promo part. Yeah. The best thing about, about wild cards and arena is that you can just tap your fingers and then you have these booster box promos that were otherwise pretty hard to get. God. They did, they did eventually say like, that was a mistake and we'll not be doing that again. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, no, for sure. And they haven't. And like most booster box promos have been this sort of like outside kind of like third best commander in the color or something for the strategy that you're trying to do with that commander, which is great. That's totally a good spot for booster box promos to be like weird kind of mythics, kind of like the original idea of mythics where it's like this isn't a card that everyone should want. But yeah, I guess booster box promo is like it's like that's another rarity above mythic, obviously, or like, you know, sort of like a secret layer or something. Yeah. So super frustrating to be, be like, and one of the best decks in standard, if not the best deck for like the whole season, plays four of this card and you have to buy a box of M19 or whatever. Anyways, let's get back to the pack. Sorry. Frilled Mystic is pretty good, though. Uh, Ministrant of Obligation, two and a white for a 2-1 human cleric with Afterlife, two. So that means when it dies, you create, in this case, two 1-1 one, one white and black spirit creature tokens with flying. Ministrant of Obligation was good stuff. Yep, solid card. Mm -hmm. Not quite Lingering Souls, but close. That's good, yeah. Essence Capture, blue, blue, for an instant counter target creature spell. Put a plus one, plus one counter on up to one target creature you control. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, yep. this wanted to be in the Simic deck, but mm -hmm. otherwise also did work. Yep. Before we get to the rare, we have a Thopter token, and we have a Gruel Guildgate. Now, the gate has to be in contention for high pick in this format right there's a, a number of opinions on that this set does include the good gate payoff cards unlike yeah. guilds of ravnica this has the sheep and the pyroclasm yeah and the colossus and the colossus that's right and the colossus the colossus is one of the big ones i think the sheep is the biggest one the gate yeah ram yeah gatebreaker ram's the the highest payoff but uh, the colossus is very good and you want to have the wrath too because gatebreaker ram lives through gates ablaze right yes exactly Whereas the Colossus doesn't necessarily. No, but then it can, it can come back later. And what was the other, the blue one, Gateway Sneak, I think it was? Oh, yeah, that card's in the set too. Right, sorry, that is the that is the less, less preferred one than the, the, the Guilds of Ravnica did get that one, the better one there. They, because in Guilds of Ravnica, you have like a Gateway Sneak that's an enchantment that just draws you a card every time a gate comes into the and onto the battlefield for the same mana but gateway sneak is still okay in the gates there obviously i just I, I remember there was a lot of on arena anyway there was a lot of forcing of the gates deck yeah so it's a consideration i think usually in your gates deck it's probably below chillbringer but maybe not anyway our rare is the immolation shaman so it's one in a red for a one three via shino shaman Whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact, creature, or land that isn't a mana ability, Immolation Shaman deals one damage to that player, which I found to be less relevant than the second ability. Three red red, and Immolation Shaman gets plus three, plus three, and menace until end of turn. Worth noting, you can activate that more than once if you have ten Yeah, mana. you sure can. Yeah. <laughs> You got 10 mana, you can make it real big, but with one activation, it, turn, it turns into a 4-6 with, with Menace. Or, or a 4-6 to block if your mm -hmm. opponent hasn't, strictly speaking, read the card. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is a, a perfectly fine 2-drop with a lot of words on it. Was it wild that I st out of this pack so far, I still want to take Chillbringer? No, a lot no. of packs of Ravnica Legions are like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, a lot of cool cards here. Chillbringer. If The thing is, if you pass the Chillbringer, somebody else gets the Chillbringer. Oh, right. Yeah. And it's just like, but I want But I that. wanted the Chillbringer. <laughs> it's kind of annoying that like three out of the top five cards in this pack are blue. Like there's the Frilled Mystic and the Essence Capture, and then there's Get the Point and the Ministrant that I think are kind of the best cards. Mm -hmm. So 
you could definitely defend playing get the point instead. That's true. But Chillbringer is like the biggest payoff. So I did I did like being Rakdos in this format with like Blade Juggler and uh, not light up the stage. Although I mean light up the stage was in the set, but the three damage with spectacle. Right. Skewer the critics. Skewer the critics. Thank you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Skewer did good work. Yeah. So either either taking Chillbringer and expecting to be Azorius or taking Get the Point here and going Ragdos is fine. All right. This set was like kind of underpowered. Like I think limited decks from Guilds of Ravnica probably would usually kill the decks from Ravnica Legions. Like it was slower format. You know, the like the aggro decks were in black, white or red, green or black, red. If you were usually the black, red aggro deck required having like a bunch of one ones. And like triggering that enchantment that cared you have if you had one ones. But everything that this set was doing was like a little slower than lots of other sets, I think. So like the the best card in the pack being Chillbringer. I just the reason I'm talking about this is like that's not that weird for this set. Fair enough. Yeah. Let's move on to our second booster. This is a pack of da-da-da-da, Modern Horizons. This was given Ooh. to us by Adam T in mail time aka forsaken 401 all right this set is not powered down <laughs> no this is yeah. a this was the good one mm-hmm. i don't know what gp we played a lot of this at but it didn't play enough of it <laughs> moonblade shinobi is first three and a blue for a three two human ninja it's got ninjutsu for two and a blue and whenever moonblade shinobi deals combat damage to a player create a one one blue illusion creature token with flying. A reminder, of course, ninjutsu is that you can return an unblocked attacker you control to your hand, and then you put this card into play tapped and attacking. So basically when they go like, all right, I'm not blocking, and then you go, haha, that creature you didn't block is actually this creature, and then you get through, and then the deals combat damage thing happens, and you get an illusion. Yeah. Nice. It's a good, it's a good card. Yeah, it's a good one. The ninjutsu deck had a lot of had a lot of synergy. I mean, apart from anything else, this one made a flying 1-1 one, one that you could then attack with that would probably get through, and then you just bounce that token into the abyss to flash in a different other ninja. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or just start the clock. Yeah, either one. Yeah. Oh, right. Slivers. Enduring Sliver. One and a white for a 2-2 two, two Sliver with Outlast, and other Sliver creatures you control have Outlast 2. So this has Outlast 2, and other slivers have Outlast 2, and Outlast is you tap and put a, in this case, pay 2, and tap and put a plus and plus one counter on this creature. Reminder, Outlast is a sorcery. A lot of people forget that. Yeah. Neat neat to give them Outlast, not not the most backbreaking sliver we've ever heard of. It's a role player in the sliver stack. Yeah. Fists of Flame is next. One and a red for an instant. Draw a card. Until end of turn, target creature gains trample and gets plus one plus O oh for each card you've drawn this turn. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's a fu- fun design. Yeah. yeah, on your turn, it's going to be at least plus two plus O oh, because you'll have drawn for the turn and then you draw off this card. Yeah. Yeah. Also, basically, as cycling as long as there's a creature on the battlefield. Yeah. Nice, nice, flexible design for a combat trick. Next, we've got Scour All Possibilities, which is also the art card for this for this pack. Very cool art. Of the, so it's like. Someone looking into like a scrying bowl, I guess, like a pool of water. Mm-hmm. 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 And then in, in it, they see themselves looking into the pool and, and in that pool is themselves looking into the pool. And it's just, it's all the way down. It's a very cool piece of art. I mean, I feel like this whenever I play The Sims. <laughs> right. <laughs> when your Sim st- sits down at the computer and starts playing The Sims and you're like, oh no. Yep. <laughs> You're like, no, go and write your novel. Come on. And you game even harder. <laughs> Stop. Put your dishes away. Stop pooping yourself in the back in, in, in the kitchen. God damn it. Anyway, we were talking about the Sims, right? Scour, yes. <laughs> scour all possibilities. One in a blue for a sorcery. Scry two and then draw a card. And it has flashback for a four and a blue. Is it an instant or it's a sorcery? It's a, it, no, it's a sorcery. It's, it's good though. Yeah, it's good enough for limited, but this didn't this didn't crack into the modern format. Obviously, it's like no. you know, it's it's cer- certainly no preordain or even really opt. My favorite thing about Modern Horizons about these two sets is that you get cards that just they just have abilities. You know, it's like oh, we'll just put flashback on this one. Like, there's no sort of like this is the you know these are the three mechanics or the four mechanics for the set it's just like anything's on the table yeah it feels more like cube or something yeah that's why i love that one there's a card that literally does nothing that just has oh cascade and and retrace oh yeah that card broke historic yeah (laughs) but it doesn't do anything it does nothing by itself it just has you can just cast it yep (laughs) 
I love it. Uh, Rhyme Tender is next. It's a one and a green for a 2-2 two, two human druid snow creature, and you can tap it to untap another target snow permanent. So sort of like a preview of Sculptor of Winter, actually. Yeah. Hmm. Sculptor of Winter, of course, was from Kaldheim, and you could only untap a snow land. Right. So but that's the was... best thing to untap anyway. Yeah, but I think th th this this would have been too powerful in Kaldheim. There were too many good snow creatures. Changeling Outcast, single black mana for a 1-1 one, one shapeshifter with Changeling, and it can't block and can't be blocked. Look, it's got its own thing going on. Th boy, what <laughs> what an enabler for the ninjutsu, ninjutsu deck, deck, though. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, very cool stuff there. Uh, Reign of Revelation, which I persist in, in, in my head, it's to the tune of Wave of Mutilation. Right. Every single time. Uh, mm -hmm. three in a blue for an instant. This one's an instant. Draw three cards, then discard a card. Yep. Nice. Solid. Good. Yeah. Seen a little bit of Canadian Highlander play. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Exciting. No, this, is, this is just a powerful effect that didn't really exist before. You know, there's lots of different card drawing spells through the ages of the river, but specifically four mana to draw three and discard one at instant. I don't think we've seen before exactly like that. Like there's various different drawbacks you can deal with. And I actually really like the new one from Crimson Bow. Three, uh, draw three and discard basic land or two cards. Um, but... You know, Reign of Revelation lets you discard anything. Gilded Light is next. We've got one and a white for an instant. You gain Shroud until end of turn. Can't be the target of spells or abilities. Thank you, reminder text. And it also has Cycling for two. This obviously is a reprint. The ones I was talking about where they're just like wild combinations of abilities. Those are a lot of the new ones, but this one's one of the reprints. Yeah, you just give yourself Shroud. Why not? Beat that Storm deck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or Cycle it. Why not? Elvish Fury is next. Single green mana for an instant with buyback four. It says you may pay an additional four as you cast this spell. If you do, put this card into your hand as it resolves. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Did, did you ever get to experience in this format getting absolutely just like unable to play the game because your opponent had a ton of mana and kept buying back Elvish Fury? <laughs> I have not. I've not been in that game. Yeah. No, I, I have not either, but I I acknowledge it and I see you. <laughs> it's weirdly demoralizing. I, I wouldn't say weirdly. Yeah, all right. Yeah, it's 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 clearly demoralizing. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that better or worse than I'm going to I'm going to guess it's better than the Sprout Swarm problem with the same setup. Like Sprout oh. Swarm is an instant that's a it's uh it makes a sapperling and it has buyback for I think three generic and it costs one generic and a green, but it also has convoke. Oh. So like as your opponent, you know, develops enough mana to start buying it back and and casting it more than once per turn, then it starts making it easier to keep doing that. Like they they have more sapperlings <laughs> that they can keep tapping their green sapperlings so they can pay the whole mana cost of the spell with the sapperlings. <laughs> no. It's like a real thing in Pauper. Unless they banned, they might have banned it by now. I'm not sure, but it has been a thing in Popper where like this is one of the end game plans you can stick into various decks. That sounds uh, terrible. Yeah. yeah, and in Future Sight draft, certainly it was like, you know, it was this it was this grind where if you had a way to remove all of the sapperlings or counter the spell or you know something, then you could you could get out of it. But otherwise, you sort of sit there for a while while your opponent builds up an ever increasing army of one ones. Wow. Yeah. One, but, yeah, it's from yeah. It was only printed in Future Sight. It is still legal in Popper, but yeah, okay. one and okay. a green, make a Sapperling. But it has Convoke and buy back for three. So yeah, it just wow. Probably Popper just got fast enough and 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 lean enough that playing Sprout Swarm is incredibly last week, like last decade. Hey, but I do never seen recall this art. running into it. Yeah, I've never seen this art from Chippy. I love the, the little Sapperlings. They look like little sort of like fungus little fungus lily pad spiders but hey if you've never heard of sprout swarm you know it's cheap to buy and uh, you can stick in your commander deck if you want a random end game of like near infinite one ones off of one card mm. cool next that we have an amorphous axe so it's two mana for uh equipment that in the art has the sort of weird purple changeling goo that all the changelings in this set have because it says the equipped creature it equips for three by the way the equipped creature gets plus three plus oh and is every creature type i don't actually think this was super relevant in this format if i'm honest but but it's neat yeah i mean it could come up but it's no uh exact same equipment from modern masters when the changelings were here and it only cost one to equip or something right it was actually from lorwyn right there's like a changeling stick i can't remember what it's called but there's there's some other equipment that's like gives your creature changeling and costs less than three to equip 
sorry, not remembering the name of you card, but it, it was in the, the last time modern masters had a, a changeling theme too, like the first modern masters, I believe ruined stalactite. That's what I'm talking about. Rune stalactite. Thank yep. you. One mana for an equipment two to equip it. The equipped creature gets plus one plus one and is every creature type. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is just better. All right. Well, Talisman of Creativity is next. We got the, reprinting all the talismans with uh, new art, I think. Or, or are these wait, or is this part these of these are the, new talismans? Right? right. This is the rest of the cycle of talismans, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Well, this one is the Talisman of Creativity, which taps for red or blue. So it's two mana. Taps for colorless. Taps for red or blue. But if you tap it for red or blue, it's going to deal damage to you. So. Yep. Yeah. Good card. Great to see these. Yeah. Glacial Revelation is our second uncommon. Two and a green for a sorcery. Reveal the top six cards of your library. You may put any number of snow permanents from among them into your hand. Put the rest into your graveyard. I mean, it's it's only three, but you got to be pretty heavy on the snow. Is this card in Historic? <laughs> Did they put this one in Jumpstart? It seems like know. a cool card that might have a home eventually. Like, obviously, if you're in a Constructed deck with a lot of snow cards, like three mana draw up to six. Yes, please. Lead the Stampede, you know, gets played. So maybe this is a card for something. Scryfall lists it as not legal in Historic, and I okay. don't think it's been banned yeah. or suspended. So I assume that just means it's not on Arena. I wonder if it's gotten any play in Modern or, or Pioneer. I haven't noticed it in Pi Modern or Pioneer licks, lists. but It's not legal in Pioneer. The upside is... Right, sorry, it wouldn't be in Pioneer because it's in Modern Horizons. But yeah, yeah the upside's pretty high. Maybe there'll be a Modern deck for it eventually. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's an interesting one. Scuttling Sliver. Uh, two and a blue for a 2-2 two -two Sliver Trilobite. It's just randomly also a Trilobite. And Sliver creatures you control have two untap this creature. I mean, I guess it's not randomly uh, a trilobite. I assume that's this must be a reference to something. Hold on. How many slivers have like another creature type? Not that many. I don't. Right? I don't know of. <laughs> frankly, I don't know of any that do. Actually, no. I've looked up. There's only four trilobites in Magic, and only and one of them was Oracle that way. There's the Cryptic Trilobite, which was a commander card that we actually spoiled. The colorless one that's like an XX and. It makes colorless mana, and then you put counters on it, and you take the counters off, and you do the hokey pokey. And then nice. this one, there's the Electrite from Urza's Saga. It's a three, okay. th two, three red red for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever it successfully deals combat damage to a player, it deals damage equal to its power to each blocking creature. What? Anyway, it got oracled because it looks like a trilobite. And then Shorekeeper, which is the one that looks like a giant wet centipede. <laughs> And you pay, that's the one you pay eight mana and sacrifice to draw three cards, right? That, yeah, that's that's that is correct. Yes, yeah, that one I remember. That's the trilobite I'm familiar with. All right, now I'm looking up all the slivers. Okay, and I don't see like is sliver queen also a noble? I can't think of any other. Like, is there a sliver zombie? There's probably a sliver zombie. Okay, so there's fungus sliver. Okay, which is a fungus sliver <laughs> name occupation <laughs> yep so we got there it's our favorite thing there's this one which i feel like was only i feel like this one's only called a sliver trilobite because they were like well that looks like a trilobite and that creature type exists so we should put it on there uh mist form sliver is an illusion sliver not yeah not zero not particularly common though oh sliver construct is a sliver construct sliver construct <laughs> yeah <laughs> what's the third thing you say it's like name date of birth or, or first name last name occupation oh first name last name occupation right. lizardman <laughs> lizardman and uh lizardman <laughs> lizardman yeah sliver overlord is a sliver mutant makes sense which, which is kind of a harrowing prospect anyway this one seems fine we got a snow covered forest and our rare Ooh, got ourselves a mythic it's hex drinker oh nice yeah take that single green mana for a snake it's a two one but it has level up and it levels up for only a single generic mana. So at level two, no change. At level three, it becomes a 4-4 four four with protection from instance. It stays that way until all the way up through level seven. At level eight and higher, it is a 6-6 six six with protection from everything. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah, this we'll thing take... is uh, the real deal. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll take Hex Drinker, thanks. Where would you like Savannah Lions? So we put some Progenitus in your Savannah Lions. <laughs> yeah yeah real good card well it really is yeah what an amazing thing you're right well we'll take that one 
That was a lot <laughs> easier to pick than the Ravnica Allegiance one. Yeah. Finally today, we have a pack of Ice Age. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. That's when I started playing Magic the first time. This was given to us by Russell, a.k.a. May We Come In, in mail time. The foil feels very different. A lot of advances in foiling technology over the last 20 years. It's also just really old and been exposed to oxygen for so long, right? Yeah. It has been many centuries since the war between Urza and Mishra. The battered landscape has become a frozen desert, and the creatures of the world of Dominaria struggle for survival. One society has risen out of the cold chaos, defending itself against bro- both the brutal forces of nature and the attacks of nomadic tribes that have emerged in the surrounding wastelands. And through it all, a twisted necromancer flourishes in the deep winter, intent on using his powers to keep the world dark and cold. You may have the skills to survive, but do you have the spirit to withstand the icy wilderness of Dominaria's Ice Age? Ooh. I love when the early... Uh, I liked when there was flavor tax on boosters. I've said that about a bajillion times. But I like also that they were positioning it as like, this is something you have to... Like, c- can you handle this? Mm. <laughs> right? right? It was like, can you, as the player, like, dare you even attempt <laughs> to play this game? Can you get this pack open? <laughs> it is a frightening proposition. Yeah. Yeah. No, I say just a scary place. All right. And who's that necromancer we were talking about? Anyway, first up, Lim Duel's Hex. Hmm. Weird. Uh, Lim Duel's Hex. Actually, I have no idea what order this pack is in. Oh, yeah. Classic. Also a question mark. It's probably like three uncommons. Ju- judging by the ones that I recognize, it's probably uncommons and then the rare, then the commons. Was there rarity as we know it there are rares in this and i think it might have been the first set where there were commons and commons and rares and then we didn't go back to having anything else afterwards all right i've i i I have briefly confirmed that this is the case i'm going to rearrange the pack and we're going to go common on common rare sure that's fine i think little bill's hex might be an enchantment that buffs a creature kind of i mean i'm gonna i is you know, I'm definitely going to ask you if you if you remember any of these offhand. Yeah, yeah. I want to play Stump Nelly here, although I'm not feeling super confident. Okay. This one, well, this our first card has so much text. It's Balduvian Shaman. Oh yeah, Balduvian Shaman. Yeah, you gotta remember that. Like the text box looks like it's a flat color, but then you realize <laughs> it's words. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's one and a blue for like a one one or a one three. A one 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 for two mana and it's got a cool picture of like a person wearing almost no clothing and like doing yoga mm-hmm. and then yeah i believe it just has one activated ability and i have no idea what that is <laughs> yeah so it's 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 only a single blue so single blue for a one one uh yeah it's uh some stellar quentin hoover art like some yoga or something yeah, yeah like an almost nude shaman doing doing some kind of yoga and then so tap permanently change the text of target white enchantment you control that yep. does not have cumulative upkeep oh yeah by replacing all instances of one color word with another i've already forgotten the beginning of this ability <laughs> for example comma you may change <laughs> counters black spells to counters blue spells balduvian shaman cannot change mana symbols that enchantment now has cumulative upkeep one <laughs> There you go, kids. You heard it here first. Baldivian Shaman. This is what magic cards used to be like. <laughs> wow. But you would stop at the pack and be like, wow, that's really cool art. And you'd start reading it and then you wouldn't finish reading it. And you'd look at the stat line again. And you'd be like, OK. <laughs> but you would look at the art and be like, cool. I wish. Wish this did something. Yeah. I wish this did something. Yeah. I'm going to you know sleeve this up. Don't know why. <laughs> you know what's yeah. funny is that the Oracle text is almost exactly the same because how else would you describe it right all right it's like mm-hmm. change the text target white enchantment you control it doesn't have cumulative upkeep by replacing all instances of one color word with another then in reminder text this part they changed for example you may change black creatures can't attack to blue creatures can't attack probably because they were like there's no enchantment that counters spells why did we put that in the reminder <laughs> text oh right there's no white enchantment that does that but there are that's funny yeah because there's a cycle of the other Right, this only targets white enchantments. Yeah, yeah, there's Death Grip and Life Force that do counter spells. They had enchantments that counter spells back in Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, and then I don't know if people played those a lot. It's possible they set up blocks with with other Mind Bend Defense decks or whatever, but that was I wasn't in those play groups back in the day, so I'm not entirely sure why that trend didn't continue. Possibly it was just weird and clunky. There's a rules call here on like a like a rules clarification. Mm-hmm. from wizards from 2004 that says it can target a card with no appropriate words on it or even one with no words at all 
Ooh, sweet. Read the card with no words at all that you want to see in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now the words are cumulative upkeep one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. How about a different Balduvian, Nelson? Balduvian Barbarians? No, I can remember Balduvian Horde, I think, but that actually might be a newer card. Okay, mm -hmm. Balduvian Barbarians. I don't know. I'm going to say it's three and a red for a three, three. Very close, actually. It's one red, red for a three, two. Okay. With no other ability. Right. Yeah. And it's like a person with a huge beard holding two swords. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Word of undoing. Is this like a, an unsummon that's an enchantment? It's an unsummon that cares about enchantments. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. It, it, it's an instant or. Yeah. Single blue mana instant return target creature to owner's hand. Return any white enchantments you own on that creature to your hand. Right. <laughs> right. So if you have something pacified and you're like, oh, wait, I need to pacify something bigger. Yeah. You can bounce their thing, get your pacifism back. Put on, you know, that doesn't seem yeah. awful, actually. No, it's not. I mean, it's it's unsummon plus. It like, is actually. Wait, this totally is strictly fine. better than unsummon. Hang on. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, this card is good. <laughs> like. It's huh. got lots of words on it. It's from Ice Age, so we've like ignored it. But yeah, word of undoing like could be extra unsummons in your Highlander decks if you need yeah. more unsummons. It's perfectly fine. Hmm. It's got no drawback. It's a one blue mana instant unsummon. Unless it's a sorcery. Is it a sorcery? No, it's an instant. Perfect. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Right. And it's got it's got a picture of a weird old person like breathing a lot. Breathing static, kinda. Yeah. Maybe that's limb duel. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, these are some dire wolves. It's dire wolves. Nice. Are dire wolves a uh, three mana one one banding? Close. You're on the right track. Okay. Two two generic and a green. Yep. For yeah, I don't know. I want to say like not a lot of power and toughness, but and has either does that bands with other wolves in first strike or something? No, it's so stupid. So it's it it's two and a green. Yeah. For a two two. Okay. Wolves gains banding. If you control any planes. Nice. Okay. Wow, it's close. <laughs> okay. It's it's hard to be specific <laughs> because you just never know where the sentences are going to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gaines banding if could have ended like a hundred different. Like we could have hit like yeah. an algorithmic generator. You know what I mean? Just like keep keep shuffling. Gaines banding if like you control three or more creatures. Gaines banding if like you control a red enchantment. <laughs> Yeah, like gains banding if you have 10 or less life. Like, yeah, could have been anything. Could have been a boat. Shatter. Okay, well, this one I know. Yeah. It's one in, one in a red for an instant. Destroy a target artifact. This art looks like if the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz had a skeleton inside him and is being destroyed. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm intrigued. If I only had a skeleton. Yeah, it's like a skeleton... Wearing steampunk goggles and wearing a metal funnel as a hat behind a piece of glass that's being shattered. What an odd interpretation. All right, moving on. I don't know how to pronounce this, but I'm going to do my best. Arnglotz Ascent. Oh, yeah. This card's kind of sweet, too, actually. One generic blue blue for an enchantment. Yep. And you can, like, give a creature flying, but now it also has cumulative upkeep. For some amount of mana like maybe it's like pay one in a blue activate ability target creature permanently gains flying and cumulative upkeep one generic close very close so it is it's one blue blue for an enchantment not a creature enchantment just an enchantment yeah you can use this enchantment you pay one and target creature gains flying until end of turn okay but this enchantment has cumulative upkeep blue Okay. All right. So this just always has cumulative upkeep blue, and you can yeah. pay a generic to give any any creature flying till end of turn. Okay. It's spelled A R N J L O T apostrophe S. So Arn Arn Arnulots Arnulots. I don't know. Lots of Arnies. It's got some mm. Drew Tucker art. Some of the most like legible Drew Tucker art. Usually very abstract work, and this is clearly some something like a some sort of elven figure with wings. Interesting one. Anyway. Cloak of Confusion. No idea. Don't remember this card at all. I remember I, I remember the art distinctly. This is some Margaret Organ Keen art. Nice. And one to black creature enchantment. A lot of text. Hold on. If target creature you control attacks and is not blocked, you may choose to have it deal no damage to defending player this turn. If you do, 
that player discards a card at random from their hand. Ignore this ability if that player has no cards in hand. That's pretty cool. Okay, okay. okay. So it turns your your creature into a bad hypnotic specter. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I distinctly remember this art. Could not have told you what this card does. Keldoran Sky Knight. Okay, so this art was on like the uh, boxes and stuff. Like it was it was promo art. And although no, I'm gonna forget. So there's like there's like several levels of Sky Knight in the in the set. Like there's <laughs> several of them and they do some mm-hmm. different things. But the one that I remember the most clearly, I think, is like three generic and a white. So four mana for a one one flying first strike banding. You are t- tantalizingly close. <sighs> it is two and a white. Okay, three mana. For a 1-1 with flying first strike and banding. You nailed that. What does a 4-mana one do? Maybe it's just a 2-2 with the same abilities or something. There's like a 4-mana Sky Knight as well. It's like a teeny little person with an enormous lance riding an absolutely preposterously large, (laughs) uh, like, ptarmigan, I guess. Yeah. (laughs) Some sort of kestrel. Yeah. Really good art, right? Yeah, it's it's great. Yeah, it's Mark Poole. And (laughs) it's a teeny guy preposterous lance enormous enormous raptor next we have regeneration okay this one i know as well along with shatter this is one generic and a green for an aura that gives the creature one green regenerate this correct Hmm. this is the justin hampton art not the quentin hoover art clearly the same art brief like the person healing their arm and you can see the bones through the skin it's kind of cool arctic foxes shoot i can remember that the the pictures of some cute foxes (laughs) I believe it's a white creature. Yes. Yep. You're never going to get this one. Is it like one white for a one one and then like it's sort of hard to block? So it's one. Yeah. So it's one one and a white for a one one. If defending player controls any snow covered lands, no creature with power greater than one may be assigned to block Arctic foxes. Well, I was getting there. So (laughs) yeah, you got closer than I would have would have expected. Good job. Essence filter. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> is it a blue card? <laughs> nope. Okay. This is one green green for a sorcery. Destroy all enchantments or okay. destroy all non-white enchantments. Okay. okay. There's a sub theme in this booster about <laughs> you controlling white enchantments. Yeah, and it's in Bant. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. All right. Interesting choice in the art as well. I can definitely remember opening up these packs and thinking, what are these white enchantments I'm supposed to be protecting? Like what from what other sets? Like what white enchantments we are like the designers? Any. Like, do I have am I is every deck supposed to be like karma and mind bend? Is it all centered around circles of protection? Maybe. Circles of protection did matter, but we're never like a really good card. I don't know. It's like this thing where you can combine them with other effects to like set up locks, kind of, but it you know, you have to put hmm. more mana into it every turn, whereas your opponent can just tap their creatures to attack. So that was always kind of a problem. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we've circled back to Limduel's Hex now. Okay, so I th- I feel like Limduel's Hex is like one and a black, or sorry, two two generic and a black for enchanted creature gets plus one, minus one, but then you draw a card at the beginning of the upkeep after you play this. I think you're conflating it with something else, I'm afraid. All right, that's how so it's one and a black for just an enchantment. Okay. During your upkeep... Limdul's Hex deals one damage to each player. Whoa. Each player may pay black or three generic mana to prevent the damage to themselves. Okay, can I have that? Sure. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. Why? I might pl- I might play that in Canadian Islander. Awesome. We've got to try it out. All right. Goblin Mutant. Whoa. First name, last name. <laughs> Is oh, Goblin probably Mutant... is too, actually. Yeah, yeah. Is Goblin Mutant three generic and a red for a 5-5, five, five, but it can't attack if the defending player controls greater powered creature than him, and it can't block if, if they attack with a greater powered creature? Close. So it's okay. two red red for a 5-3. Okay. On the printed card, it's just Goblin, but I just checked Scryfall, and it is indeed Goblin Mutant creature type Goblin Mutant. Perfect. Uh, it's got Trample. Oh, right. So that's fun. And it's like a picture of a two-headed goblin or something, right? It's a, it's a three-headed goblin. He's got heads for shoulders. Right, right, right. Which is, I'm, I'm sorry to report, he has heads for shoulders. Mm-hmm. Can't attack if defending player controls an untapped creature with power greater than two. Oh, okay. Can't be assigned to block any creature with power greater than two. Right. All right, two more cards. Illusionary Terrain. Oh, I should just know this. Wait, is this... Is this not just a reaper? This is a reprint from beta, isn't it? Blue, blue for enchant land, and it becomes whichever basic land type you want. Close. So it's blue, blue. Okay. It's just an enchantment. 
Okay. All basic lands of one type become basic lands of a different type of your choice. And this has a cumulative upkeep? Of two, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, and our rare, it's a weird one. It's Zer's weirding. <laughs> a weird one. Not so weird, actually. This is like a really recognizable card. It's been reprinted in other sets. You can almost see Abzur's loincloth. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Why would you want that? <laughs> Anyways, this is a cool enchantment that's been in lots of, you know, not not usually the best decks in the constructed format, but like it's fun to build around and, and you can play it in commander and stuff. So three generic for and a blue for an enchantment mm -hmm. that says I'm not sure how it's Oracle worded exactly, but basically whenever a player would draw a card, they reveal that card instead and any player may pay two life to have them discard that card. That is correct. Uh, with the added ability of players play with their hands revealed. Oh, and you're playing with your hand huh. revealed the whole time too, right? But yeah, 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 exactly as you said. If, if a, or I mean, as written on the original card, whenever a player draws a card, any other player may pay two life to force the drawing player to discard that card. Effects that prevent or redirect the loss of damage cannot be used to counter this loss of life, etc. Oh, right, and the damage is... Yeah. Yeah, the damage always gets through. Yeah, but neat card. Sort of, it's sort of a prison card. But sometimes you play it, and it's a little sketchy. And like you know, you have there's some play to it where like how much life you had when you played it matters, and obviously the board matters too. So it's like it's interesting. You know, playing mm -hmm. is weirding. This was reprinted as recently as ninth edition. Yeah, it's in modern or uh, mystery boosters. All <laughs> right, mystery booster. There you go. But yeah, I believe it's modern legal. Like it's yeah. Huh. It's a cool card. Cool. Well, there we go. We cracked some packs. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Boy, what a weird pack that Ice Age was. Uh, if you want to get yourself some some of these cards, they probably have a lot of them anyway at Card Kingdom. So head on over there. Go to cardkingdom.com slash LRR. Tell them we sent you. Ask for, ask for a button. Ask nicely. They'll send you one. They will do that because you're great. What the heck is the first pick out of that pack? Is it just <laughs> oh. word of undoing? Like, was there any good creature? The wolves were like a 2-2 two -two for three. You could take a 2-2 two -two for three. Maybe that three mana first strike flyer with banding. It's only a 1-1 one -one though, right? Yeah. All these creatures suck. Yeah, I mean, there, no, there are some <laughs> okay creatures. Like green has Scaled Worm and Shambling Strider. And then black has like... Swamp, no swamp mosquitoes not till alliances sorry black has a two three for three though hmm. anyways right. sorry head on over to card kingdom oh yes right also because you're great is why you support us that's that's where i was going with that <laughs> at, at our patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run thank you all for listening when you are listening to this i guess desert bus is still ongoing hopefully hopefully yeah so bounce on over to twitch.tv slash desert bus and uh, or desertbus.org and join in the festivities over there and uh, we will be back in i think we're having a I, th I think there's a week off for tap tap and then we'll we will return stronger than before later on so yeah thanks for listening and uh, jordan edits these james has been running the card reader heather gets these online i've been graham joined by nelson hey hit me in the comments for what you first pick out of that ice age back i have no idea and cameron huh and we will talk to you all next time bye everybody bye, bye.